Hi, I'm going to show you how to create a force feedback meter for R Factor 2 using the SimHub application uh, from beginning to end. Uh, so, to start off with, just go to google.com, type in SimHub into Google, just go ahead and do a Google search. Uh, you can click on either of these two options. We're just going to go to the main uh, website for the developer here. Uh, we're just going to go to download. And we're going to select download here. This is going to redirect us to racedepartment.com. You will need an account with Race Department in order to download the application. Um, it's free. Uh, they'll just ask you to create a username, a password, and I think they'll, they may ask you for your email address. I don't quite remember. Um, but just go ahead and uh, do all that. Download now. That's a 235 megabyte application. Uh, so let me take a few minutes. Um, just saves it as a zip file. And I just saved it over here to my desktop. Uh, extract it, extracted it here into its little own folder here. The contents of the zip file is the executable and the bin file here. Uh, don't mess with the bin file, just run the executable, just run it as administrator or open. Uh, run everything uh, as default, don't change anything uh, except the user license agreement. Hit next, 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 done, don't change anything, don't uncheck anything. Uh, once that's done, you'll have the little shortcut on your desktop here. Run the sim hub. And then it'll just open up like this. I do recommend uh, donating to the developer. Um, it comes with some more perks, including uh, increasing the um, refresh rate of the little widgets, which is really nice. Uh, 60 frames per second as opposed to 10. 10 is it's a little choppy. Um, 3 euros, not too much. Uh, so you'll get uh, created with this little page here. Um, go ahead and scroll down to R Factor 2. Uh, select R Factor 2, not R Factor 2 Spectator. And then go up to the top here and select Open Instructions. And that's going to uh, give you this little folder here. And inside here is the how-to for to get uh, SimHub to work with R-Factor 2. It's essentially you're just copying over this uh, plugin file over to your uh, root directory for your your plugins directory for R-Factor 2. Uh, I have mine. Here we are. R Factor 2, I'm going to bin 64 plugins and then just paste the file in here. I already have it in here, so I'm just going to replace it. And close out those windows. And then go over to Dash Studio. And we're just going to create a new dashboard. As you can see, I already have a couple created there. We're just going to name this uh, Force Feedback Meter uh, V2. You can name it whatever you want. This is, this is my second attempt at creating one of these videos. Uh, to add a little bit more um, fidelity into kind of uh, adjusting the objects. I set the grid to 5. Makes it a little bit easier for me. Uh, I'm going to go to the dashboard option up here. I'm going to change the width to 165 and the height is going to be 140. Uh, you can make it smaller if you want. Uh, this is you know, still quite big uh, for some people. Uh, we're going to go over to screen, and then we're going to go to the more components down here in the bottom left. We're going to select vertical linear gauge, and we're going to need four of these. So we're going to go with one for the clutch, one for the brake, one for the throttle, and one for the force feedback. Now I'm going to select all of these here by holding the control key and selecting all of these using the left mouse button, and we're going to change the width to 35 and we're going to change the height to 130 and I'm just going to kind of get these nice and organized so that they're one block apart from each other including the border just kind of make everything look uh, nice and neat um, so we'll select the far left one here and we're going to rename that object clutch gauge we're going to change the background color to transparent. Um, personal preference, I just don't like having a background color. We'll scroll down here to gauge color. I'm going to change the gauge color to blue for clutch. And for the value, we're going to create, we're going to select the uh, function button here. It's going to open up this new window. We're going to go to computed value. And the NCALC formula for the clutch is here. And I'll have a base bin link in the description if you want to just kind of copy and paste it from there. And then paste the formula into here for the incalc formula. Leave everything default and hit OK. And then we're going to go down to the next one here. This next one is going to be uh, break. It's going to be the break gauge. 
And we're going to change the background color to yellow. Because I'm going I'm to be using, um, oh, not the background color, I'm sorry. Uh, the background color is going to be transparent. The gauge color is going to be yellow. I'm going to be using red and orange for the force feedback meter to kind of um, make it a little bit easier to kind of uh, gauge that. Um, go back down to value for the break gauge and select the function button. Go back to computed value. And the in-calc formula for the break is here. And we're just going to paste that into there. Hit OK. And we're going to the break gauge. We're going to go next to the throttle gauge. Just change the name to throttle gauge. Change the background to transparent. Scroll down to gauge color. I'm going to set the gauge color to green. Green for go. And we're going to change the value here. Computed value. And that one is here. Paste that into incalc formula. Hit OK. And then that one's good. And now we can go to the force feedback meter. We're just going to name that uh, FFB gauge, because why not? Uh, background color, we're going to make that transparent as well. The gauge color, we're going to make it a little bit different to kind of denote, uh, make it different, change different colors depending on the, the level of the force feedback. Uh, so we're going to click the, the function button for the gauge color. We're going to go to computed color. And we're going to be using the incalc formula for force feedback for color. We're going to be using that formula again in just a moment. Uh, the starting color is going to be zero, or the value is going to be zero, and I make the color white, uh, just personal preference. Um, some people, you can make it whatever color you want. Uh, some people can put it as green for good or something like that. I just put it as white. Uh, middle color, uh, check the box there for middle color. Change that value to 50. And then I'll be changing the color over to orange. And then the ending color is going to be 100, or the value is going to be 100, and the color is going to be red. I'm just going to leave it as red. And then hit OK. And then we're going to scroll down to value for that uh, object as well. I'm going to hit the function button, computed value, and we're going to use that formula once again down here. Paste that there. Hit OK. And that's basically all you have to do. Uh, just go ahead and do File, Save, exit out of there. Go ahead and get rid of that there. And then your new dashboard is actually going to be located at the very bottom of the page here. Um, you can favorite it uh, to kind of make it a little bit easier to, to kind of see. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to kind of set this up. Um, but yeah, you'll see it down here. Just left click on that little start there. And then I like to start it as windowed. And we'll just go ahead and minimize the, the main window there. And then we have our little widget there. It's not going to show anything at the moment because we haven't launched the game. Now we're just going to go ahead and launch our factor 2. And to make sure that the widget shows up on top of the application, uh, I like to make sure that R Factor 2 is set as windowed mode. And to do that, uh, we'll have the R Factor 2 launcher here. We'll click on the little gear icon, go to video settings. And for mode, we're going to change it from full screen, if you have it on full screen, to borderless or windowed. I'll just set it to borderless, that way I don't have to worry about any kind of border messing up with the screen. Uh, hit OK. And we're just going to go ahead and launch the single player there. <clears throat> and as you can see, it's still on top of the application there. And I'm just going to be using uh, Bridgehampton with a McLaren M23 as the test. Uh, the wheel that I'm using is the Fanatec CSW V.5 uh, um, with the, uh, I forget what it's called, the uh, the hub base with the, like an aftermarket wheel on top of it. Um, my, my settings are all default. Um, I, my sensitivity is set to auto. My force feedback is set to 100. Uh, shock is off. ABS is off. Uh, DRL or DRI, I think that's drift or something like that, set to negative 0.5. Uh, force is set to 100. Spring is at off. Uh, dampener is set to 100. Uh, faint or FEI is set to 100. Uh, just basically default for the wheel, for the base wheel. Uh, so now that we have the game loaded here, I'll just go into settings and I can show you what I have my settings set up for the uh, the wheel and track combination here. I have force feedback setting to 12, or smoothing set to 12 just because it's a really bumpy track. And the multiplier set to 90, just so you can have an idea of uh, what, it, what it's going to look like with uh, the settings that I have. And we're just going to hit race. Now you'll notice that the, the mouse kind of disappears unless you're right over the widget. Um, so you, you can drag the, the widget around on top of the screen so you can just kind of move it wherever you want. We'll just 
set it here for testing purposes. And with the setup, we'll go ahead and take off. As you can see, I'm turning the wheel, and you can see the force feedback meter uh, uh, reacting to the, to the force. I have the clutch pushed in at the moment, so the dual bar is completely full. <laughs> Bye.